Hey, Falcon fans, I'm Thomas Mott. Welcome to Atlanta Falcons today. I want to jump into cut candidates. Now, we talked about cut candidates in the past, and this is an interesting list because it seems to change, right? You get to rookie mini camps, you see who's pushing people for jobs, you get to OTAs, you see who's starting in those jobs, and then in a couple of weeks, really a couple of months, you're going to get to training camp, and that's where you're really going to start to kind of hear who's playing well, who's playing bad, and who is on kind of that cut bubble. So, I want to try and predict who I think could be five cuts for the Atlanta Falcons coming up during training camp. Am I going to be on 100% right? Probably not. I mean, we're gonna do our best here today, but just know this is a fluid thing that is ever changing, and we will obviously update you when we think other people might get cut, whether they're on the bubble or people actually get cut when you get closer to training camp. Let's just jump right into the most obvious one, the one we've talked about almost every single time we mentioned cuts, and that is the linebacker Deion Jones. Now, at OTAs, the linebackers, as I mentioned in a video yesterday, were underneath the microscope and playing very, very well. Rayshon Evans, Michael. Walker, Troy Anderson, all playing great football. A lot missing there is Deion Jones. Now, he, of course, had the offseason sh uh, sh shoulder surgery, going to miss all of the OTAs, and so not being out there is already kind of a knock against him as he wants a new deal, Atlanta doesn't want to pay him a new deal, and very clearly have drafted his replacement in Anderson and are kind of ushering out the era of Deion Jones. Now, he was mentioned as a post-June 1st trade candidate. We talked about that after June 1st, a couple of weeks ago, and he still could be traded if a team uh, is desperate enough, but the odds of that happening to me are uh, ever dwindling. And so I could see a scenario where Deion Jones, you get to training camp, you let him go, you eat whatever dead money you need to eat, and you focus in on the young linebacker core led by hopefully Troy Anderson, like I said, Michael Walker, and Rayshon Evans from the Tennessee Titans. If I had to pick somebody on my list who I think is most likely to be let go, I think it's going to be Deion Jones. Not today, not tomorrow, not next week, but I think eventually when you get towards training camp, maybe even halfway through training camp, Jones is no longer going to be a Falcon. You hope he's traded just to get something in return, but the odds are he will be uh, cut, and that honestly is going to be a bad thing for the Atlanta Falcons because these young linebackers, I'm excited to see what they can do, and they need to get on the field to gain that on-field experience. Okay, add break pin comment down below. Name a player you think will get cut. Do you have a Falcon in mind that you think is on the cut bubble or will get cut this offseason? Let me know who that is down below right now. All right, next player on our list is somebody who uh, he's been in the e or the uh, the uh, I would say he's been out there in terms of actually being in the news recently regarding our Atlanta Falcons. That is the quarterback now turned hybrid tight end in Felipe Franks. Now. I admire what Franks is trying to do. He understands that the quarterback depth chart is way too full. They have way too many guys in front of him, and he's probably not going to make it as a quarterback in this league. So he's going to go ahead and use his you know, physical skills, his speed, his catching ability, which we've seen uh, at times during OTAs, and his, 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 his running ability to try to make it as a tight end. But I just don't know if Franks will make it as a tight end. I, I, I don't think he will. Now, if he does... Fantastic, because if he makes it as a tight end, it's very clear that he earned that spot, and he'll be the number two or number three behind Kyle Pitts. But the odds of him actually doing that to me are a little slim. I could see him being a practice squad guy, having kind of another year to develop as a you know, you know position-changing tight end, but the odds of him being you know tight end two or tight end three on this roster come week one are very, very slim. Plus, you already have Kyle Pitts, and Kyle Pitts is going to be really tight end one and tight end two because you need to play him as much as possible because the guy is absolutely fantastic and you drafted him that high and so get as much as you can out of him. Again, I admire what Blue Bay Franks is trying to do and I wish him the best. I hope that he has a chance to make this roster as a tight end. I admire any uh, team player, as you would say, who wants to go ahead and try to make an NFL roster and trying to do other things besides the position they played in college, but the odds of Franks doing that to me are very, very slim. I foresee him being cut. Now, we are very close to 7K subs. Very close. 6,920. 80 subs away from 7,000 here on Atlanta Falcons today. If you guys love the Falcons, you like what we do, you like the fact that we actually cover the Falcons, unlike other channels or unlike the major media. I mean, ESPN, no coverage of the Falcons over the past couple of weeks and months, and they won't touch the Falcons until training camp. And even then, it'll be like a little tiny hit, like, oh, look, Marcus Mariota. Okay, move on, right? Go back to talking about LeBron James. We talk about the Falcons 24-7 here on the Atlanta Falcons Today channel. So go down below and help us grow by hitting that subscribe button. All right, next cut candidate, a little bit easier of one. I think Tease Tabor is definitely one of those on the bubble, the defensive back formerly out of the University of Florida. Another situation, I kind of like the linebacker position where you got young guys who I think are just in a better spot to go ahead and win this uh, win this battle, most notably Richie Grant. Grant is kind of the guy that you expect to go ahead and take over here. And Tabor, you know, he's been in the league for a little bit. He's not necessarily old, but he definitely is not 
I think at the level where you want to have a starting caliber defensive back. Now, role guy, depth guy, sure. And maybe you need some depth there at safety and they keep him in the end. But I think when you need to whittle this thing down to 53 men, which is difficult to do, as we know, Tabor is going to go ahead and be left off of the list. I Maybe even a practice squad guy picked up by somebody else. He's not done in the National Football League, but I just think they're too young a DB and have a lot of more investment there. You know, Jalen Hawkins, wrong with Richie Grant, that they want to go ahead and get in the football field ahead of guys like Tabor. Um... Well, well, grade the Falcons defensive back group right now. A, B, C, D, or F. Where are you at on the grade for the DB group? Let me know in the comment section down below because I think they're sitting pretty good. Maybe B minus, depending on how good these young guys play. Give me your grade in the comment section. While you're down there, the Falcon polos are still up and actually 40% off. These things were originally 40 bucks, right, for the black and the red, the two-pack polo combo. Now they're $23 at chatsports.com forward slash Falcons combo. 23 bucks. I mean, you're looking at... Less than $15 a polo. You're looking at less than $12 a polo. And these are two in one. Absolutely fantastic. Go ahead and pick these up. The link will be down below in the description box. Wear it on the golf course. Wear it, uh, you know, to the fancy dinner. Wear it to the barbecue, to the block party, wherever you want to do. Rep your Atlanta Falcons today at chatsports.com forward slash Falcons combo. 40% off right now. Won't last forever. The sizes are going to go quick. Pick it up right now. All right, let's go ahead and get to some wide receiver cut candidates here because I think that's where they're going to make some serious cuts. And Arthur Smith has said they're going to make cuts at wide receiver. I think Tate's probably the odd man out. Now, Auden Tate, you... Uh, on paper, you love this guy. And when you sign him, you go, oh my gosh, he's absolutely massive. The dude is huge. I mean, he is uh, everything that you want in a super tall, go get him kind of wide receiver. But he's been a wide receiver in the league for enough time to where you know what he is. And that is not an elite receiver. And it's not really a starting receiver either. It's the reason that he was so cheap on the free agent market. I just think he's not going to make what is already a crowded wide receiver depth chart. I think they're going to cut at least two or three of these guys because they got to get down to six maximum of seven wide receivers. They probably want to keep more offensive linemen, as they've said, instead of receivers. And so if I had to guess, and it is only a guess, I think that Tate is going to be one of the ones to be let go. Maybe Al or, uh, Geronimo Al uh, uh, Allison could be let go. I, I think Allison makes the roster, though he's had a little more experience, at least being successful in the National Football League. But I do think that as you get to the wide receiver group, somebody's got to go. Multiple people will have to go, and Tate is probably going to be my pick uh, for that spot. But honestly, it could be anyone. What is your record prediction for the Falcons? Where are you guys at on Atlanta in terms of wins and losses? I'm going to get a fresh uh, record prediction down below right now in the comments section. You feeling seven wins, eight wins, nine wins? Like, where are you at right now for your record prediction? Give me that down below in the comments section. Okay, one more wide receiver to round out our list of five, uh, Frank Darby. And now it's early for Darby. And I think that I really want Darby to make it here uh, in year two. Injuries were an issue. But like I said, along with Auden Tate and the rest of the receivers, Darby has a lot of competition. There are so many guys in front of him. And it's not like they're just way better in terms of overall skill. But when you have a bunch of guys who are kind of around the same skill length or skill, or skill level, the best players are going to rise to the top. And if Darby's not able to get on the football field, and hopefully he's healthy and everything in reports say he's healthy, but you got to remember he was a six-round draft pick. And if he can't get on the football field, there's just no need to go ahead and take up space with him at that position. Now, you can move over to being a practice squad guy, one of the protected, protected guys coming in and out of the lineup. That's fine. Maybe you don't give up on him completely, but making the final 53-man roster is very, very difficult. And it's just interesting how it works every year. Every year, there's some undrafted free agent or some six-round draft pick, seven-round draft pick that Falcon fans and NFL fans in general latch on to. It was Darby last year. It's, I think it's Tyler Algier this year, who was a later-round draft pick, the running back, who I like, but there's no guarantee. And they love a guy so much that they go, Frank Darby is going to be a steal of the draft. He played great during his time in Arizona. Like, it's going to be fantastic. And then they don't do anything on what was already a weak wide receiver core. So... We'll see what happens. I'm rooting for him. I root for all these guys. I don't want people to get cut, but I think he rounds out our list of Deion Jones, Felipe Franks, Tease Tabor, Auden Tate, and Frank Darby to be the five guys right now I think are on the bubble and could be caught. Uh, or cut, excuse me. You guys still watching? If you guys are still watching the end of today's video, I appreciate it. Give the video a thumbs up. Comment Ma, down below for a future shout out in a future video. If you guys want to get a shout out at the very beginning of a video later on this week, comment Ma, down below right now and I will pull a couple of those to give shout outs. And be sure you guys are subscribed as we have plenty of great coverage coming up on Thursday, on Wednesday, uh, where we get you guys all the latest Falcons news and rumors and break down some more position groups as we always do. Follow me on Twitter at Real Thomas Mott. It's a good place to go ahead and get your latest and greatest Falcons news. News. I am always on Twitter, probably too much, going ahead and giving updates in terms of what's happening with the Falcons, retweeting stuff, liking stuff, commenting on stuff. You can also DM me on Twitter if you guys have any Falcon-related questions as well, so give me a follow there at Real Thomas Mott. But be sure to subscribe because we're close to 7K subs, and when we get to 7K subs, I think we're going to cruise to 10K subs and then keep going beyond there if we try to get you guys, again, all the latest and greatest Falcons content. That way, 
you don't have to worry about turning on Sports Center because as part of my take, or I should I say, part of the interruption, going to go ahead and talk about the Falcons today? Probably not, but we are, so reward us by going down, hitting that free red subscribe button, and helping us grow. Okay, ultimate review today on our Atlanta Falcons news and rumor video with some cuts for producer Jeffrey. I'm Thomas, signing off. Do the rest of your day.